Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us remotely. Uh, we're here to present our, um, our talk on a flexible, touch-free, interactive platform for exhibiting physical and digital student works in a university library. I'm Adam Rogers. Uh, my role is the head of making and innovation studio with the North Carolina State University Libraries. Um, and in that capacity, I've been kind of holding the vision for the innovation studio, which is the project we'll be sharing with you today. And nice to see everybody. Thanks for joining us. I am Luke Klein with Relative Scale. We are <clears throat> a creative technology studio based in Raleigh, right down the street from NC State University. Um, my role is creative director and also um, one of the project managers and producers on the project and uh, work very hard to support the design and development team, uh, which is led by Luis. Hi everyone, uh, thanks, for, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Luis, uh, I'm also with, with Relative Scale and uh, I was uh, uh, the um, lead, lead designer and developer on this project. Uh, it's been a very interesting journey with, with, with all this. All right, so to kind of give you an over uh, a high level view of the system, uh, the space was uh, designed to be an in-house exhibition to show off featured works uh, of students and, fa and uh, faculty, as well as a multi-purpose uh, workshop space. It's a rectangular room uh, built in these four quadrants with uh, technology mounted overhead. There are four modular tables uh, that make up one instance, uh, and each footprint is about 120 inches by 60 inches. Uh, it's up to eight, uh, eight stations per instance, uh, and uh, with in a given in a given station can be a single or a double uh, station, and then within that the station can be a single or a collection of works, and a work is is supported by text, image, video, and audio. There are 4K pr projectors overhead, and uh, touch is simulated by an Intel RealSense depth se sensing camera. Perfect. And so what you're looking at is actually a finished, um, a picture of the finished state of the installation, or probably about 99% finished. Um, and what you don't see in that photo, but you can kind of clearly see in this photo, is some of the technology that is mounted overhead. So. There's a lot of moving parts in this project, which made it um, a lot of fun and introduced some um, interesting challenges. So in this view overhead, you can see that there is a Unistrut mounting grid um, mounted within the grid and pointed down towards each one of those four tables that Luis referenced are four 4K Optima projectors uh, pointing down onto each one of those white Corian tables. There is also a, hopefully you can see my mouse, but each one obviously has the Intel RealSense camera pointed down as well. There are sound tube dome speakers above each one of the table instances. All four of these different applications, same application, but all four of these unique installations are driven by a dedicated Windows PC and everything is, uh, all of the data is served by a um, uh, Red Hat uh, RHEL server uh, using a Django CMS, and the front end was built in Unity. So I'll give an overview of the context and concept here. Um, so NC State University Libraries is a library system serving a public land-grant university. We're very large, we have 35,000, over 35,000 students, um, historic strengths in design, engineering, um, in public science, as well as many other areas. And the library's role is, um, you know, it's, it's grown over the years, but we're primarily supporting research, instruction, and, and kind of, you know, move, moving towards more support of individual student creativity, building community across campus, and more. Uh, we are often known for our Hunt Library, which we opened in 2013, which is kind of a landmark building in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, and which has won many accolades. Um, but we're really leaders in the library field, particularly in the academic library field. And one of our strengths is developing new learning spaces, uh, such as the makerspace that you see here, which was one of my previous uh, projects, um, and our visualization labs. Um, and next slide, please, Lou. 
So we had this really wonderful opportunity to um, undertake a major renovation of our D.H. Hill Junior Library, um, which we began planning in 2018 uh, and has just opened now here in fall 2020. And in this context, the library has decided to create a new learning space called the Innovation Studio. Our goals with this space are uh, one, um, to spark innovation through workshops and course collaborations and sort of build on strengths in that area of um, teaching new skills to students, uh, collaborating with instructors uh, to bring new technologies and skills into the classroom. And then the other part of the space is to highlight innovative and creative work made by students and faculty from across campus and really realize that vision of the library as a um, central space for, for campus, you know, for sharing of ideas um, of folks from across campus. Thanks. Um, as our vision for the space came together, we really, um, came to this concept of flexible space. So it's a space for exhibits, but it's also a space for workshops. Um, and that led us to a crucial design consideration. The space would be used for exhibits most of the time, but they would, those exhibits would need to move out of the way for instruction um, some of the time. So courses would come to visit the space for uh, you know, hands-on workshop in the space um, you know, for a couple hours, or we would have um, you know, walk-in uh, or, or registered uh, workshops that anyone could attend. Um, and so this led to the use of interactive projection and a touch-free approach, which allowed the spaces tables to be used in both modes. Uh, so we couldn't do anything like use um, heavy installed touch, touch tables, which then we wouldn't be able to use for the workshop mode of the space. Another concept um, that was Part of our vision is this idea of hybrid exhibits, showcasing physical and digital content. Um, we wanted to have an interactive and tactile experience, but also one that was very data and media rich, um, and that could, could really sh um, show student work no matter what form it came in. Um, we were inspired by many projects from the museum world, uh, as well as from outside of the mu museum world, um, and we ultimately decided to bring a museum-like interactive experience uh, into our library. These are some photos of early explorations, the libraries, uh, as we developed this vision and concept. Um, we really had some really talented folks in-house uh, who got to work on building prototypes, uh, building out the concepts. So on the left here, you see kind of a physical tactile layout of how big are these tables going to be? Um, how big are the touched areas going to be? Um, we partnered with our College of Design on campus uh, to bring in some really talented graduate students to work in this project. On the right, you see an early prototype that's actually in an interactive projection uh, showing some content from, uh, from our campus partners. But then, um, you know, we, we really felt like we needed and wanted um, a partner with professional expertise in building these kinds of projects. And that's how we came to relative scale. So when Adam and his team reached out to us, um, we made our way over for an initial consultation, um, several of us from our team, and did what we typically do in scenarios like this, where we'll sit down and have a conversation. And we listen and kind of understand, you know, what the objective is, what the big idea is, who the audience is, um, et cetera. So uh, after a, a conversation with Adam and his team, um, we realized that the uh, most logical first step was to engage for a concept design phase so that we could do some workshopping and we could identify the constraints, identify the schedule, the budget, et cetera, uh, before we moved into production. So we had a couple of charrettes with a full team of probably about eight people on the NC State side, as well as everybody from, uh, from our team. Um, and really what we wanted to drill into, um, kind of the, the three biggest items from that, uh, CD phase. One was to immediately start working on some, uh, UX design and some layout explorations in conjunction with conversations regarding, uh, types of content. 
So um, as has been mentioned, the, uh, the experience affords Adam and his team to exhibit digital works as well as physical works. Uh, each table instance, uh, which is made up of four smaller tables, each table instance is 120 inches wide by 60 inches tall. So we did multiple explorations, um, some to scale, but we did mul multiple explorations and had conversations regarding, okay, well, how many individuals can we fit around this table at any given time? Additionally, what types of, of layout options and how much flexibility does the university need with respect to the types of content that they want to exhibit? So do they want to have a 1X station to exhibit physical content? Do they want to have a 1X station that is digital only content? A 2X station that's a hybrid of physical and digital, et cetera, et cetera. So at that same time, when we were doing low fidelity wireframes, we were working with them. And this slide is a little difficult to read, which is also in some ways kind of part of the point, but we were working with them to put together a content matrix because there was a lot of content that I know Adam and his team wanted to uh, discuss exhibiting within the application across from different colleges within the university. So a really, really big lift that continued for a long time was just kind of the winnowing down of of what types of content, what are the different components within each one of those exhibitions uh, that we want to share, and then how do we start to kind of frame them, modularize them, and, and actually start to script them in good sort of like bites and, um, you know, good, good lengths for a, a quality user experience. Um, the third big part of that initial concept design phase was uh, a conversation and some initial testing uh, regarding technology, of course. So the back end, you know, we realized that the, um, the folks at the University of IT wanted to utilize their um, virtual Red Hat server. Um, so we knew that we were gonna develop the CMS using Django. Uh, we were going to serve all that data to the application on that side. We developed in, in Unity, as was mentioned beforehand. And then we knew we had these different integration uh, items to consider as well. Uh, we tested and researched various cameras, ultimately decided that the RealSense depth camera was the, um, was the best fit for this project. Um, the university had also identified the Optima 4K projector as, as their projector of choice. And RFID was something that we, we discussed early on, um, utilizing that technology for this, but it was ultimately decided that that may come in a later phase. Um, Luis, you wanna speak briefly to why uh, we utilize the RealSense camera? Yeah, so um, the there are very many uh, depth sensing ca um, cameras out on the market right right now, and we'll be uh, looking at the uh, long term uh, um, like uh, overall plan of de of de 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 development of the real sense cameras made it more reliable and more um, and, and, and seemed to be a be better fit for uh, making sure that there is a c c continued support from in in Intel as this um, as the space is continuing to developing. And that one also gave us the optimal field of view for the uh, projector in the distance from the camera projector to the table. Correct. And I'll throw in there that the projectors, um, we didn't really have many great choices for projectors because we needed a short throw projector because of our low ceiling height um, and the distance from the ceiling to the table. And we needed 4K resolution because we wanted to put so much content onto the table to enable all those different stations. And thankfully we were able to find the Optoma projector and we wish there were more options in that, um, that Venn diagram between 4K and short throw. Okay, so after the concept design phase, um, we, so we concluded that phase with a 100% CD package. Um, met with Adam and his team, and soon thereafter moved into development, which was right around the same time that the entire world uh, 
went on lockdown. So that made things very interesting for a number of reasons. And um, the first one was we immediately got the um, projector or uh, acquired one of the projectors and one of the cameras from NC State and then began prototyping, which we would normally do here in the studio. But in this instance, Luis did that from home. Yeah. So um, it was uh, right, right before lo lockdown, we were uh, testing with the RealSense camera and, you know, getting that proof of concept of what is, what is the interaction? How do we track all, all, all that? What are our options for interactions? Are we are doing skeletal tracking or blob tracking? Um, you know, uh, any sort of like uh, any other f uh, forms with that. And that's when we were at home. And so uh, being, being the lead developer, I ended up having to create my own uh, at home set up all while you know we're still trying to figure out what is a station how do we interact with, with, with that station what is the overall story for that space how is this how is this stuff being uh continuing to be uh modular and uh and kind of fitting that that overall um, vision so simultaneously we were also doing our ui uh and content gathering as well so uh, and I, I can see we, uh, and, 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 you know, to kind of add on, add on with that is that the university was moving into online e e education at the same time, which meant we had a delay of content, uh, gathering. So while, uh, while, while, while doing that, we were trying to figure out what is, uh, how does, how does each, each station kind of grow and, and account for all the, the, the variable types, you know, that if, if it's going to be like a short text field or long text field, or we have quotes, or we have fast facts, what is a, vid a video? How does that, uh, how does that, that grow for a one X station versus a two, a two, a two, two, two X station? Uh, how do galleries account for all, for all those uh, di um, di differences? And then when we were on our, um, during that process, we paired, um, we, we pair these uh, UI designs with 3D renderings of, of, of the space to help the whole team uh, understand what might this look like in situ. And yeah. I think, I'm oh. sorry, go, go ahead, Adam. I'll add that this is a fairly new project for us of, of content gathering, content development. We've, we've done some exhibition in the libraries, uh, but not of this scale and, and type. And so these, um, these views into what the space would look like, what the system would look like, were very helpful for us to bring to content partners and sort of iteratively have that feedback loop of, here's what it'll look like, does your content fit into this? And, and that would sort of stretch, you know, the way that the content frame was built uh, or the modules were built at the same time that we would learn more about um, what content was coming in. Yeah, and I think it's also important to point out that we, um, we met uh, the relative scale side and the NC State side. We, we met for, you know, an hour each week, had Zoom meetings. Everybody was adapting to the, the, the new work from home challenges. I uh, feel like we all adapted really well to that. But um, the, the feedback that we were able to receive on a weekly basis was, uh, you know, critical, uh, absolutely critical. Um, and then to kind of piggyback on a couple of things that Luis had mentioned, and I know that it's a little bit difficult to appreciate this just from some quick slides, but um, it took a lot of iterating and work with the NC State side as they were supplying content to determine which modules wanted to be shared for, uh, for the different types of exhibitions, whether they be dig digital or physical. Um, and then furthermore, and I don't know that this has been mentioned yet, some of these collection, excuse me, some of these stories that are being shared fall into a larger collection. So that became another uh, UX and UI exploration as well. And that's, and, and as we got going into the CMS, it, it kind of became very apparent that, you know, there, there is no uh, perfect work. And so, and so we had to make the system be perfect no matter what we got because you know you aren't going to get the same information from every student from every project etc um and nor nor should you so uh so that's kind of it it kind of created this whole dynamic uh, system where uh we we centralized our our idea around that each entry inside the cms is a work and then each work can have any number of 
creators uh, one to five, or you know, we even accounted for groups. If if, if there's if there's many creators and and listing each one would be a bit too di too 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 difficult. Um, as well as if there's no picture, it's okay. It, the system works around that. Um, and then you can have any number of 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 modules like 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 listed before of all the varying co content types and all that uh, kind of then gets us to the point in, in which what you what you you can see on the left is our table uh, layout tool within that tool uh, essentially is a mock up of of the one instance in the space so you kind of can see in the top left there, there's there's a 2x station and you know next to that are are two 1x stations and then there's four uh 1x stations on, on the bottom and within each each of those those sort of like table you're able to you know say is it a is it a digital station or a physical station? And that gives you the accompanying list of those works. Um, and then if it's a digital station, you're able to kind of group them into collections and it creates its own menu system that, that centralizes around that I, I, idea. Um, as well as for the larger stations, you can even have what's called hybrid stations in which if there's a digital and a physical component to it, um, a good example of this would be if there's a VR experience, but then the library is also pr providing the headset for you to put, put on as well. You know. It may not look great as a as a physical station, but we have a hybrid station that, that accounts for all, all all of that. And then from there, uh, they're able to, to take that and assign each table into in, into the room. And so you can see that there's the four uh, essentially the four instances of of the room that you're able to assign that to. And they're able able to create any number of tables and any number of room layouts at at any given time um, but one is one room layout is essentially active it is it is the active room um, and from within the CMS they're also able to to do quick uh, cur cur curation by editing the room layout editing a work and then going over to the room layout tool and saying push to the table and it will instantly um, update the the, the the table to any any ch ch um, ch changes that are made which uh, to c continue on with, with the CMS, uh, the additional feedback loop. So the every time that the table is interacted with, uh, the um, application pushes back to the CMS to say that it logged the um, the, the interaction. It doesn't uh, account for which pages you um, you look at, but which tables, uh, which works that you're, you're you're looking at on on what ta table and how long you're looking at, at that. So uh, this was to kind of help the library, um, you know, curate the space to see which works are more engaged with, you know, is. Are, are some collections too long because they're not getting to the end of them? Are some works too long because they, they're in there for a minute and then it, they, they leave, you know, the ordering needs to be changed um, as well. Uh, and then um, all that is exportable as a spreadsheet for them to then create their own charts, their own graphs uh, and kind of uh, do their own um, uh, data from there. And forgive me, Luis, you may have mentioned this, but in case it wasn't clear, the image that you're looking at here is from one of the tables in the space, uh, table number three, and these colors and these numbers correspond to the eight stations around that table. Um, and then, uh, so as we were kind of finalizing uh, our, our alpha and beta testing before we, we, we actually went in and in, in, in saw, you can see in this picture, uh, I've, I, I upgraded from my room at home setup to uh, we, uh, some of the re re restrictions kind of got lifted and I was in, the, in our, our studio space um, testing uh, with Luke, uh, t testing that multi-user touch-free interactions. And this is where we really dived into, you know, what are, what are the, the limitations of, of the camera? What, you know, when does this type look too big? Uh, how much noise are we getting from lights and air conditioning interference um, that, that could create false, uh, false, false triggers. And all that kind of led to us thinking about a more, a more hybrid interaction feedback uh, uh, approach where we, we, we look at how, how um, users um, are, are accustomed to mouse gestures, but then, but this feels like a, like a, a touch experience. So how do we then also uh, use touch feedback and terminology to then uh, make, make the experience as clear and user-friendly as po 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 possible? And with that, we also uh, needed the system to verify what work on the intent of, of interaction. Um, and so that would be, if you just move your hand over a button, it, 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 much like a mouse, it tells you that there's a button there, but it, it doesn't trigger the click. It's only on long hovers is it actually 
considers it a tap or a click. And so here uh, you can see, um, as we've kind of been throwing around terminology, this is a, a 1x digital co co collection. And, uh, and as, as this person hovers at their hand over the, the arrows, the collection then is, is, is uh, moved to a, um, to a given work. And then from there, they're able to, to see the, the, the title of the work, a uh, image, and then also uh, and then select to go into it. And in this uh, vi video, you see a uh, 2x digital, uh, a, a digital, 2x digital station, sorry. Um, and uh, this person's looking at a gallery. So they're hovering over the next and previous bu buttons uh, that includes the I image and a caption. Um, when she's done, uh, she's able to use the arrow to go to the next uh, piece of co co content. And uh, that ring that you see um, next to the content is expandable uh, for any number of one to over uh, 15 different pages. So um, as was mentioned previously, we're um, nearly 100% complete. Just some final adjustments that are being made uh, currently as of today on site. Um, but we've got a couple of photos in here just to show you all some uh, visuals of what the finished space is looking like. Um, so I think one important um, piece of the story to, to tell is that as we, as we began our software installation, uh, as is usually the case, we uh, clearly had to overlap and shake hands with others who were, you know, installing at the space, installing in the space at the same time, specifically the integrator. So um, our approach was as soon as one of the tables was ready for us, we were on site and installing software and uh, really wound up taking an approach of let's get one full instance dialed in um, and then move on to the others as they are ready. And to kind of piggyback on on that, as Luke was saying, like di 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 dialed in. Um, what was interesting with this one is that each 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 table was unique, um, and so part of that was uh, making sure the system was was able to. You know, we we talked so much from the the, the front end with the content being that that dynamic. We also needed the application uh, on a system level to also be dynamic to know that you know. Uh, uh, the uh, this table is positioned in this way with with, with the camera at this position at, with with the projector at this height and what does that mean how how does that affect um, and kind of going through and really dialing in um, that as well as any additional noise or anything else co coming in from the cameras right exactly and so to that end you know uh, everything was documented at the beginning and drawings with respect to the the height of the projectors the height of the cameras but invariably once you're actually on site there's always little micro adjustments that need to be made. And so one of the things that we did that Luis specifically did was create a, a tool for the administrator so uh, they can hit a hot key and bring up that tool. And there's probably 12 to 15 different micro adjustments that they can make in order to really dial in on the interaction zone for hovers, the sensitivity of the camera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so just to, to conclude here, I mean, in the last few slides, you saw um, how much complexity um, relative scale was able to work through in terms of user interaction, user experience, technology. Um, so that's just been amazing to see all those problems um, arise and get solved and, and, and to see it uh, really come together. Um, you know, one, conclusion here is, um, you know, we built an in-person experience for and in a time of distancing and quarantine. And so that um, raises a lot of questions. Uh, we were already m moving along with this project before we moved into that time. Um, but the world that we're in is very different from what we were imagining when we started the project. So um, we are uh, excited to still have people come in and, and, and interact with the space and to to see how the space uh, moves with them into this new, um, new world. Um, one really kind of, um, you know, sort of luck lucky aspect of the project is that the, the touch-free design really fits this time when people are wary of public surfaces and people are moving away from touch screens. Um, you know, that was something that enabled the flexibility of our space and, and its use for 
uh, workshops as well, but it, it's happened to be really fitting for, um, for the coronavirus moment as well. Um, one shift in the project was um, we really imagine this physical and digital content and maybe even more physical content than digital. Um, but as um, the university moved to remote learning, we really started to favor digital content um, just because it's harder to get physical stuff uh, from students. There's, students are not making as much physical stuff if they don't have access to studios and labs that they otherwise would. Um, but we've still built this hybrid design that will welcome in those physical works as we are able to, to bring them into the space. Um, as we said, pr prototyping at home was, was challenging. Uh, working together remotely was challenging. I'm sure everyone is, is, is running into those challenges, so we don't need to go into those too much. Um, but then really one of the major successes, I think, of this project is that it's a platform. It's um, one that can bring in new works um, and display new works each semester and really keep pace with campus uh, and stay vibrant, stay engaging. Um, and really meet the community, which itself is very vibrant and, and engaging, you know, um, as Luis was talking about the, the multiple creators earlier, I was thinking just, you know, how complex a university environment is uh, to be able to display projects um, in the really varied and diverse um, world of authorship that is a university is really a success. And so we're very excited to, to um, welcome folks in to, to see the current version of the space, but also to see the many versions of the space that, that come over the, uh, over the years and months ahead. So thank you all uh, for your time. Um, uh, many thanks uh, from me to Relative Skill for this great partnership, um, and also to our many colleagues who uh, supported our work, who are here in the credits, um, too many to name individually, but this is very much a, a team project with many, many people working on it. Thank you all very much for your time and look forward to uh, seeing you in the Q&A very soon. Thank you. Take care.